This is my first trip to SEO Moz, MozCon, and so it's great to be here. And, and Rand did take a lot of time prepping all the speakers of what to expect and how to prepare our presentations. And he literally did say, bullet points kill kittens. And I apologize that I do have a few in there, but it's to call out key points. And I'm happy here for a lot of reasons. One, and I'd like to thank the MozCon folks that have me here, and I'd like to thank all of you guys for coming here today. And it's good to be here because I came from Chicago, which, if you haven't heard, we've been having quite a bit of a heat wave, to the point that even my technology started to quit on me when I was going to work last week. That is literally a screenshot of my iPhone that I took on my commute in when I pulled it out to do some email. So that was quite a first for me. But there's a lot of conversation in the industry about SEO versus PPC and which one's better. And just humor me for a second because I'd like to really understand. I mean, how many of you just primarily focus on just SEO or that's your regular job? So quite a few of you. And how many do more paid search and that's your focus? Okay, great. And how many do both? Okay, so a lot of you. So hopefully you'll find this useful because I wanted to dive into it. I don't want to focus on the versus one over the other, and that's a lot of conversation in the industry. It's really about understanding the power of both and what are some of those strengths that you can call out of this data and how do, you, how do you use that to really enhance the overall performance for all of them. So as it was mentioned, I am from Digitas. Uh, we are a full service agency and I know I'd like to respectfully disagree with, with Bill that we're not all evil. We are actually built on a platform of analytics, which is one of the reasons why it appealed to me. And I've been there for about two years, and prior to that, I was in-house. And so I've been working on both paid and organic search for about 11 years, and I've been fortunate in my career to do both. And even though we work with a lot of, lot of very large clients, a lot of the tactics and tips that I'll give you, you can use actually for whether it's your own blog, or it's you know, a small client, or it's, it's something that a small business that you're running. So, <laughs> as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of conversation in the industry about one over the other, and there's some very, very powerful arguments about why SEO is better. And there's powerful arguments as why paid search is better. In fact, last year, Rand and I were on a panel together, and we had the SEO versus PPC where we were arguing each other, and this was practically us debating our, our respective sides, but it's not really the point because we, we are good on our own, but we're more powerful together, and we should really celebrate our strengths overall. I mean, we're really like that, it really is that peanut butter and jelly or that cookies and milk, you know, we just belong together. So I apologize for my bullets, but I think these are important points. You know, when you start to see paid and organic search together, you see an increase in click-through rate, you see an increase in brand recognition, and you also see an increase in brand favorability. And these are industry statistics, and you know, if you're coming to me as a client, and you're just saying, here's some industry-specific data, or if you're coming to me in-house, like, this is why we need to do it, I'll say, great, that's interesting, that's industry data, what's in it for me? And so when I talk to my team and I talk to my clients, I try to take it from their standpoint of what's in it for them. Like, why should they care that they do both? Because there's a lot of arguments on either side. Why not to focus the resources and why not to focus the budget? We just want to do one over the other. So to start out the conversation and how you can really lay out the case of why using both together, if you take paid search, you know, how can you take organic search data and enhance your paid search program? And there's a couple of different ways. You know, you can take that organic search data, see all of those terms that are actually coming to your site, and take that up against your paid search program and start to see where there's some opportunities. So where might you be running broad match search terms? And how can you refine those to maybe be more phrase or exact match so you can really bring those costs down and create a more efficient campaign? When you get into that situation, of course, you're sacrificing a little bit of traffic, but you're actually using that organic search data that you know is performing because you don't just have, oh, this is the traffic opportunity that you might get through a keyword research tool. You're actually seeing how it's going to perform for you on your actual site. So you have that information you know, readily at your fingertips that you know you're making smart decisions. The other thing, too, is you know, how do you then look at ways that you're not cannibalizing on your organic search efforts? And I actually will have a case study for one of our clients where we went through this, where they really pushed back hard, and there was a question earlier 
about how do you prove this out, but they pushed back hard saying, we're not sure paid search provides incremental value to us because we're number one in organic search, especially in our brand term. So how do you then put to, together a measurement plan and really show them that this is the right and the smart thing to do? So on the other side, how do you use paid search data to help your organic search program? And there's several different ways that you can do this. One is looking at your paid search program to see where those high converting terms are. So when you're, when you're talking about organic search, you can't boil the ocean. There aren't just resources sitting around going, I got nothing better to do. I'll, I'm sitting here waiting for you to give me some work. In many cases, whether it's a medium-sized company, a small company, even large companies, those resources are in high demand. So you have to go against all these different projects to say, you really need to focus on these organic search efforts because this is what's going to impact the bottom line. So you can do that by using those paid, the paid search data that you actually have performance metrics and you understand what it's going to do on your site to focus those resources on areas of opportunity to say, we already know this, what's going to happen. So let's try to, to build up that value there. And the other piece, too, is content development. You know, finding those gaps where you may have high-performing keywords, but you don't have the right content. Because we, actually, we had a financial services company that they actually they did the like, home loans. So they did mortgages. And what we found on our paid search data was that the terms around mortgage calculators were performing really, really well. But they didn't really have any content for it. So we said, you know what, there's an opportunity here. Let's develop some content so that we can provide a better solution and a better pathway for people to get them where they want to go and see what happens. And what happened was there was a 200% increase in conversions because we did provide a better solution for them. And that was really using that paid search data to say, we don't really have an answer. Let's build it out. So again, it's playing on the strengths of both of how you can improve the overall program. So at this point, you might be saying, well, that sounds all good, but how do I really do that? And it's quite simple, actually. I mean, you could put together a very simple search dashboard together where you start to pull in three data points around paid search, organic search, and then just search data. And I'll show you step by step how it could work. So first, think about your paid search <laughs> metrics. This can come down to your impressions, your click-through rate, and then your conversion rate, or your conversions in general. And your conversions could be whatever it might be important to you. It doesn't have to be selling a product. It could be certain high value tasks where you want someone to download a form, or you want someone to engage with a video. Whatever that metric is your, your, that is important to you, call it out in that dashboard. The next is your organic search data. So pulling in those SEO sessions, as well as those conversions. So measuring those out on that same dashboard. So you have an understanding of that quality of traffic. And the last piece is looking at that search engine data. And this should include the Google volume. So when you go into AdWords and you get that Google volume, use the you know, more the exact match version of that, because that'll give you a better idea and be more realistic than you get in general. But also, it's important to understand, because you may not be able to spend all the money in paid search. You may not be ranking well in organic search. So the point is, you may not have that full share of voice. So by having that initial data for the Google volume, it gives you an idea what that total opportunity is. The other thing that's important to understand is where you're ranking on your organic search terms right now. So pulling in where you're ranking, because that's obviously going to play a difference. And then what is that ranking URL? So back to that case that I mentioned with uh, the mortgage company where we were ranking, we, we weren't ranking very well for mortgage calculator. There was a page, it was a pretty terrible page. It allowed us to focus our energies on what existed today and be able to refine that so we improved the experience overall. But it did exist, it just was pretty bad. So making sure you understand what that ranking URL is because it may not be the right experience for you. So getting into a bit more detail, so this would be an example of pulling in the organic search data. So you'll see it in that orange section. So this would be our organic search data, with the green being paid search data. And that's where you pull in your conversion metrics. And you could start to get in that granular detail, understanding the different match types of what you have today, whether they're broad or phrased, whether they exist or not. So what are the opportunities for you to add to that campaign based on that conversion data you're seeing in organic search? And then what is your opportunity? Again, take the broad match terms, might do fine, but it would be better if you could pull it back into Fraser, because that 
to bring those costs down and create a more efficient campaign. So again, using that data that already exists to your advantage. The next thing would be to take your paid search data. So understanding your paid search data, you know the conversions, you know the terms, you know what's going on. How do you take that and focus your resources on areas of opportunity? And there's a couple key questions you need to ask yourself because it's important. You don't want to, you don't want to waste your time, especially when it comes to focusing resources because we're all vying for those same resources. So you want to understand what are those, those powerful keywords that are driving a lot of conversions, right? Then you want to understand where you're currently ranking because that's going to make a difference. But the point there is if you're not on page one, somebody obviously has to go. So what does that competitive landscape look like? And that's important because you want to do your due diligence to drive into what are the in-page, on-page, and off-page metrics and, and information that you can cull from those competitors. Is it easy or is it hard? Because it may be too difficult, it may be too competitive. Even though you're getting a lot of conversions and paid, you may not want to tackle that at first. Go after something like the low-hanging fruit. So you can lay it out in kind of this grid or spreadsheet or whatever makes you feel comfortable. And what's important to note here is that because you're going beyond keyword popular popularity, you're not just looking at that that keyword research tool, you actually have the data that tells you where those true opportunities are. You can lay it out in a revenue or whatever your conversion metrics, they're important to you. So in this case, you can focus your efforts on more of the low competition, the high revenue standpoint, because you know this is where it's gonna be that low hanging fruit that you can tackle immediately that'll give you good results. And what I find, especially whether you're an agency or you're, you're a person within a, a company and you're trying to vie for those resources, once you get people excited about this stuff and you start to make a difference and impact the bottom line, especially when it's engineers or people that are kind of in the background who get kicked around a little bit, let's face it, um, when they get, they get excited and they feel like they're making an impact in the company or just in general, they get excited and they come up with more ideas. So by able to attack some of these areas of, that are easy or opportunities, you know, it's a win for everyone. So there was a question earlier about you know, what happens when you have a company that says, I don't want to buy my, my brand search term because I don't believe that's the right way. And we went through this with Delta. So Delta is one of our clients. And we are their agency of record where we do everything. And Delta, in, in their own right, because they do a lot of marketing that's offline and online, they're looking to maximize their dollars in general, where search strategy is one component. And even though we look at it over here as search, we're also trying to maximize those dollars overall. So even some of these tactics and the methodology, this is a large client, you can take this even if you're a single person shop or you're small business or you have small clients because these questions come up quite a bit across the board. But with Delta, they came to us and they said, you know, we're not sure if search is right for us. We're not sure if we should be buying paid because we're number one in organic and we do pretty well in general. But the reality was is that for every dollar they gave us, we gave them $60 back. So it seems kind of logical that they wouldn't want to cut their paid search budget, right? But their question was, was like, rightfully so, because who doesn't know Delta, they're the world's largest airline. They said, we think people might have come to us anyways. You know, we're not so sure that paid search is really contributing to this. And we think they're going to come to us or come to us through one of our partners. So their partners would be people like, you know, Kayak or an Orbitz, you know, or a reseller. So we said, okay, let's, let's do a test. Fair point. Let's let the data do the talking. And that's what I like to do with a lot of these situations, you know, back to the anecdotal evidence or back to the wrestlers arguing about who's better than who or, or there's all these bullet points, 32% higher click-through rate and so forth. That's all nice to hear, but what really makes a lot of sense is when you let the data do the talking. And so we went ahead and set up a test. And it was a fairly robust test. And we worked with our strategy and analytics folks to put together this regression model. And one of the things we wanted to make sure was that there was nothing that would impact this in a statistically significant way that would take away from the overall bottom line. So we wanted to make sure that everything was, the methodology was solid and that we could definitively say that this either worked or didn't work. So we set it up in two different ways because we, did, we couldn't do an A-B test. We had to do, you know, basically the, the base test, and then we had to go back and we said, okay, here's what we're comparing against. So looking at 
that the, basically the constant group. We said, here's business as usual. We're going to spend the regular brand amount. And then we said, what we're going to do with your brand term is we're going to spend 50% less than what we're spending today. And we wanted to see, did that have an impact at all? Or did those sales go somewhere else? Was organic search able to pick up what we left on the table because they were number one in their brand term? The second piece was on the non-branded side. And this was important because we felt like we weren't doing enough in non-branded search. So we said, let's do, do a test where we'll just keep business as usual for several weeks, and then we'll bump it up against spending 100% more in non-branded search to see if that makes a difference. And then we wanted to measure against some of their key markets. So Atlanta is their key market because that's their major hub. New York City is also important to them because they have the Delta shuttle and then all the other markets that they fly out of. We wanted to measure against a number of different things. So we wanted to measure against paid search, organic search. We wanted to look at offline impact. We wanted to look at their site. And we also wanted to look at partner impact. So for the first piece, what we looked at was looking at the brand spend and then comparing it up against business as usual against a 50% 50, 50 decrease in brand spend. And this is what we found. So overall, we found it, it had a negative impact, not just in paid search. I mean, you can see in Atlanta, which is one of their, their key marketplaces, 53% decrease and 22% decrease overall in revenue. But it also impacted organic search in a negative way. So we were able to show that it wasn't just paid search. It actually negatively impacted that those two working together were able to be stronger side by side than one over the other. And then, as you can see, it impacted their partner sites as well as the revenue on delta.com. So the next one was to look at what happens if we increase our non-branded spend by 100%. What does that do compared against business as usual? What we found, and this is what's interesting, it had a positive impact, but what was interesting, I thought, was that it had a positive impact on paid search in New York and also their other markets, but not on paid search in Atlanta. But it had a positive impact in organic search in Atlanta, which you can't predict. And that's why it's so important to run these tests to see what actually happens when you do these side-by-side -side tests. And you can see, you know, again, let that data do the talking. And this also had a positive impact for their partner sites as well as the Delta.com revenue. So this was good overall. And the good thing for our team was that our, our budget wasn't impacted, which was great because that's what we were trying to avoid and showing them this is the right thing to do. They actually gave us more money because we were able to show them that there was incremental value in running cer the search program. It wasn't just about, you know, oh, we're looking at it as a silo. We're looking at it across the board to see what that impact is and what happens when you take it away. What does that really do? And um, I, have, I have actually a lot of stories about this. And as it was mentioned, when I worked at AOL, there was a question at one point in time when I was running paid search, and we had a fairly large budget uh, of about $60 million. The finance people came to me and said, you know what? Everyone knows who AOL is. You know, they're going to come to us anyway. And I said, let's go dark. And what happened when we went dark was it did have a negative impact on traffic because it wasn't top of mind. It was one of those things that, you know, if you wanted a chocolate chip cook recipe, you didn't go to AOL. So there's a lot of opportunities in different ways that you can show that. And within three weeks, they were coming back screaming because traffic dropped so much. And so that's where you come to a point where you can argue your sides back and forth, back and forth. But until you go dark or until you put this test together, it's really hard. You're just going to go in circles. So let the data do that talking for you. And a couple of last points that I want to make especially when you're thinking about paid and organic search. When you talk to Google, they say about every month, 22% of the searches that they see are brand new, things that they haven't seen before. And so this is where paid search can help out, because if you run like larger you know, match types, so a broad match or a phrase match, you might be able to capture some new traffic, because people are changing the way they search all the time. So this is an opportunity to, to comb through that data to see, are there additional opportunities? Right? So are there, is this a, a seasonal thing? Is this just a spike because something good or bad happened? Or is this something that's more permanent that you may want to think about building content against because it's an opportunity that didn't exist before? 
The other thing too, and, we, and we've talked a little bit about this throughout the past couple days, is understanding how people search. So it's not about that last click or last conversion attribution. It's really understanding that funnel process. You know, 37% of conversions happen after multiple ad clicks. So depending on what you're selling, you know, some things are really easy to buy. If you're going to, to put your money in a 401k or if you're going to buy a car or even if you're going to buy a blender or something that, something that seems significant to you, you're going to do your research. And there's multiple places that you're going to click and find that information. And it's not atypical. A lot of people do that. So it's important to understand how do people get to you so you don't necessarily cut off keywords that are important along that, that path. And how can you build content against that to help people as they're finding information? And last but not least, it's important to understand too when you're thinking about paid and organic search. Roughly 13% of conversions attributed to organic search were preceded by a paid search ad click. And that's not insignificant. And again, I think it ties back to how people are searching for information along the way and truly understanding who your customer is. And there's no specific formula to understanding this and mapping it out. There's not like, this is the way you do it and that's it. You really have to sift through that data to understand, you know, how does your customer behave and what are some opportunities for you? So just in summary, you know, as I mentioned, there's a, there's a significant lift when you're looking at paid and organic search to, together. And it's not just on the click-through rate. It really is when you start to get into that site engagement and the conversion path. We've seen it time and time again. And I know it sounds cheesy of this one plus one equals three. But in the 11 years I've been doing this, I've never seen a test where it wasn't a significant lift when you were working with those two together. So I encourage you, if you're not doing it today and your clients aren't asking for it, this is a way you can take that information back to them and really excite them. And if it's not clients, it's your own company, you can excite people about this. This is how you make it more efficient. And then use that data to pull out those strengths. Uncover additional content development opportunities. You can do that, again, by looking at your paid search data, tied back to that mortgage calculator example, didn't really exist, but it was something we were able to uncover to develop additional content to improve conversion overall. And then use your organic search data to improve your paid search campaign. What can you do to either add additional keywords that you know are converting well in organic search or find those match types to pull the cost down to reinvest and make that campaign better? And then last but not least, use your SEO efforts or your paid search campaign to prioritize your SEO efforts. And so looking at that paid search data, what's really converting? Understand that competitive space and focus those resources in the right area and tackle that long hang, low hanging fruit. Because in the end, you know, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We really should be embracing each other and each other's strengths because it really makes a difference overall. It's a chance to excite your company. It's a chance to excite your clients and improve the bottom line. So thank you for your time, and I'm holding, holding you up from lunch, so <laughs> thank you. Thanks.